Living in Jamaica is not always exciting. There are a few things that limit the enjoyment that we have here, and we're going to share those with you. Jam from family, the jam from family, jam from mom and with me. Hello, 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 Wagwan. Big up yourself. What are you there, yard? Are you there, abroad? Welcome back to another episode of Life with the Jam Fams. Now, in this week, this episode, we're going to be looking at some of the things that limit our enjoyment here in the country. So, one of the first one is the fact that we do not yet have a car. And what that means is that it limits our ability to go to some of the places we want to go as much as we want to go and also to get around as we would like to. And especially when it rains. Um, when it rains in Jamaica, it's like a torrential downpour. You know, it's not like umbrellas it cannot help you. So um, when it rains, sometimes um, it immobilizes people. And it would be good if you were able to just get on like you would be able to do in, say, the UK. When it rains in the UK, people just keep moving around. And you need to. But here, um, you're risking being absolutely drenched, soaked to, by the time you get to wherever you're going. The other aspect of that same point um, about mobility and, um, is the fact that there aren't um, scheduled, structured shuttles or other means of transportation to get you from where you want to go to some of the events, to get you to where you want to go, um, to get you from where you are to where you want to go, where some of the events are that you actually want to visit. Of course, there are taxis and there are bus services in um, certain areas. Uh, how, and there is also Knotsford Express that can take you from city to city. But taking you from where you want to go to these um, areas where you want to go for, for ledger uh, that are oftentimes outside of cities, it's not um, the same. You don't have those provisions to take you there. And so um, what people tend to do is they either charter a taxi or they rent a car or they collaborate with other people who have cars to get to go to those places. And sometimes, of course, those can have its drawbacks and its inconveniences. And so, in a sense, that sort of is a bit of a limiting thing for us um, whilst we are trying to enjoy Jamaica. It's times like this that I don't really like because it's raining, everybody have them umbrella, my foot is wet and it's getting wet and more wet and we need a taxi to go home because we just come and do a shopping but guess what it's time like this when I need 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 to have my car <laughs> so times like these inspire me to work quickly at getting it we'll need to see how that one works but Moving along the street when it rains here it pours so of course you have to just be sighting the water and in no time so much of it come down and you just get soaking wet and of course we do need the water because that's the nature of the climate we have that we need the water to cool down the place we need the water to you know give the farmers what they need for their agriculture and we need the time getting cool down so that we don't have more unnecessary issues with the hurricane as the water in the Caribbean. Normally, when it's not raining, the car park, the taxi stand is full of vehicle, full of taxi. Now, it's raining. The typical thing happened when it rains. Like somebody saw me going out the, um, yesterday when it was also raining and said to me, Oh, look like a love rain. I had to say to him, Well, I'm from an environment where whether it rains or it snows, people have to go and you have to go where you have to go. You have to stick to where you're committed to. So this is how the car park look right now, simply because it's raining. Normally it's packed all the way. You have no gap, no space. This is what it looks like and then look at the traffic on the road with people trying to get where they need to go and this is why i definitely need to hasten the process of getting myself a car because as soon as the taxi come up then get packed up as people run over there and go into them and of course some of the taxis are probably not in operational 
um, because it's raining at this moment in time and that's just how life goes so I'm just hoping that we'll get one soon so we can get home I've been standing here for a while so the next factor is a lack of social awareness so and what I mean by this is you you um, experience such high levels of noise pollution so for example you have the trucks and the motorbikes and they should be using silencers um, on their exhaust but they don't and so when you when they pass whether they pass your street or they pass you in the town or wherever you pass them this they they give off this le this noise disturbance it's so loud and overbearing and it just it, it seems like nothing to some of the people because um, it, it's such a pervasive thing in in the atmosphere wherever you go um, another one is the, the the music blaring um, you go into the town and in the in the space of walking about say a hundred yards you would have heard at least three to four different systems blaring and playing different competing um, systems playing in the same vicinity so and, and they are so loud that you, you, you are just constantly hearing them blaring in your ear and then um, the other element of it is the, the personal space so you go out and you go into the taxi for example and of course taxis here um, tend to be a shared um, ride so you go into the taxi and in, in other countries where people are going to be on their personal devices they would put their earphones in no the majority of people the taxi is already playing music and yet people will take out their mobile phones and they have those in their hands and they are playing whether whether they are watching social their form of social media which tend to be what they're what they're doing their their social media that they watch and they are watching them and you are being exposed to all of that that you don't even want to be exposed to and you're you're it's invading your own uh, mental space because they are listening to it and they are now exposing you to it with no thought or consideration for the fact that they're already competing sounds the taxi music plus what they are playing and they will continue to play that for the journey with no thought or consideration for the fact that there are other people in there in the space that they are they are invading those people's personal space and the other aspect of the personal space is you go out and somebody is selling something and they ask you if you want to buy it you say no and no isn't good enough they pursue you and they are literally pushing it into your face for you to um, for you to see as though somehow them doing that and imposing on your personal space is going to make you change your mind and buy their things and they don't realize that all they're doing in that way is just irritating people um, then the other one is where um, people feel that they just need even though you are just your body language is saying no don't come into my space they still feel like they need to come and touch and and be in your space in that way which is just unacceptable so those are some of the ones and the final one to do with the social awareness um, is the graphicness of which things are presented in the official media channels whether it's on the news radio station or it's on the television and the, the, some of the things that they say um, in those time periods where children are also able to listen to those um, so it's not in the watershed times in the night when you know that children are, are um, in their bed sleeping and they're talking to an adult audience it's even in the midday news and you will hear them telling you things and it's with such graphicness as to what happened in any incident and you have to stop to think why on earth would they want to expose people to this level of graphicness in just sharing the news this is not a drama or or an action movie that they are portraying here it's just the news that they're telling make it less graphic so that children aren't constantly being bombarded with this this level of graphicness to to condition them into thinking that behaviors like these which happen on in other occasion in every country would ever be acceptable norm um, because when you hear it in other countries it's not portrayed in the same way they don't show it in the same way they tell you for example somebody has been mobbed that's it and they leave it at that but here they have to give you every graphic detail I don't know why first of all the police are releasing that type of information but and equally I don't know why the media feels that it is important to share that type of information with the public especially at times when children are 
able to hear those content is limiting public play parks and community centers so there's not as many being um, put in place here and um, especially where you have affordable housing developments being done they are not um, the thought of implementing play parks even though these developments are being built for families and also um, in some of the suburban areas they're used to the people they are just putting up um, and activities for their children in their yards and people who live in some of the subdivisions um, tend to just put activities there for themselves it would be great if play parks were planned into the communities a little bit more so that uh, children will have those opportunities to go out and utilize them and the fourth thing is just the cost of things that we are generally used to in the country that we're coming from they tend to cost a premium and so we have to be conscious about buying buying them as frequently as we used to um, we do try to incorporate them in our shopping but not as often as they would have been incorporated in our shopping and so and sometimes you know just um, the familiarity of those things that you are used to um, helps to boost your um, your enjoyment of things however I'm sure over time we will find uh, substitutes for each of those things so that we are able to wean ourselves from them so to speak there is also a limited amount of children or family centered active recreational activities such as things like fear theater and um, such forms of activities and as such um, you need to be very creative about what you're going to be doing and um, where you're going to find things to do recreationally and hopefully over time that that will improve so those are five things that limits our enjoyment of Jamaica so madam mm -hmm. how things nothing much just chillaxing <laughs> so what you're doing Okay. Okay then. So why is it your number one? I have absolutely no clue. It's just the only one that can be made enjoyable. Really? It's enjoyable? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I can inhale the scent. Like for example, vacu vacuuming was okay. That I prefer vacuuming to sweeping. Sweeping is a mine and the dust is always lifting my nose and I have to go back and, and dust it up. Mm-hmm. So yeah. And I don't like washing the fruits. That's the worst thing this can try. Is it now? Well, well I'm going to leave you. And you're chore doing. I'm going to go outside. Outside? Mm -hmm. I thought you were going to Fix up downstairs. I will go downstairs shortly. I'm just going to go outside first. So what's my outside time coming? Um, when you finish. <laughs> you can get your outside time when you're ready for Seriously? Uh-huh. I'm already for you now. Okay then. Well, I'll see you when I see you. Okay, dokes. Bye. <laughs> The damn fun family Where I live in the good life We're royal cruising through the West Indies Having fun Enjoying the good life Damn fun family the Jam Fan family, yeah. Jam Fan, come hang with me.
thank you for staying with us on this another episode of Life with the Jam Fams. Bye for now and we will see you in the next one.